I'm going to show you how to work with absolute value in Mathematica. And we're talking about the absolute value function. The first thing I want to show you is if you, if you forget something in Mathematica, you can always try the free form inputs. I'm going to show uh, once again how to do that. I'm going to click on this little um, tab thing right here. I don't know what the technical term is, but I'm going to click on that little tab and it says free form input. So I'm going to click on that and I get something that looks like this. And I want to put in the absolute value of x because I don't know the let's say I don't know the technical command in Mathematica. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the vertical bar x and then close the vertical bar and then just hit return. And then it's thinking you gotta be connected to the internet for this. It's thinking, and then it tells you that absolute value of x is called abs x. That's the technical definition of the function in Mathematica. The absolute value function is a is a built-in function. And it's called absx, and we can plot that. We can go plot absx, say from minus four to four, and there we get a nice graph of it. And this is indeed the absolute value function. So if I forget that it's technically capital abs brackets x, I can always use the free form input, and it'll tell me um, what the technical definite, what the tef technical name of the function is in Mathematica. I'm going to show another way of defining this function, and that's going to be using uh, the, the piecewise defined definition of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this uh, math assistant. So here's the math assistant, and I'm going to click on type setting and expand that. And I go down here and I see this uh, cell right here, or button. And this is the piecewise defined function. And it tells me uh, the shortcut for adding rows to it, which is control return. It gives you some information when you when you keep the the mouse over it and, and, and keep it there. It'll give you this little yellow box pops up and it gives you some additional information on that on that box. This is how we're going to define a piecewise defined function in Mathematica. So what I do is I go f brackets x underscore close bracket colon equals and then I'm going to click on that and now I'm going to type in the definition of the absolute value of x. The absolute value of x is minus x when x is less than 0. And it's x when x is greater than or equal to 0. It is defined at 0. So you have to use greater than or equal to. And so I'm going to use the, the palette for that. And I go down here and get greater than or equal to. And that should be x greater than or equal to 0. Whoops. Not 0. Then I hit shift return. And then now I've defined the function, and I can just type f of x, make sure it's, everything is correct. And everything is correct. And now I can plot f. And I'll get the same picture that I got above. And we see that we get the same exact picture. Mathematica has this definition built in. It's called abs uh, bracket x. But I wanted to show you how to, how to define something using the piece, how to, how to define a piecewise defined function using the, the palette. If you ever get into trouble on, on how to do input in Mathematica, um, go to the palette. Like if you're having trouble with, with uh, square root or other functions, use this palette or, or with fractions. It's got the fraction button and it's got the, the power functions and the root functions. And, and that allows you to, to do input as you would normally write it uh, as a human being when we write it on paper. You can input it using the, the typesetting palette. You can input that into Mathematica as you would normally write it. Or you can just know the commands, but it's easier to use the palette, in my opinion. OK, so we got f of x defined. This is the absolute value function. Now, one thing to note about the absolute value function is the absolute value function takes an input, and it makes sure that the output is positive. Uh, that's the, the, that's um, essentially what the absolute value function does. Geometrically, what it's doing is it's telling you how far from 0 that number is. But in terms of a graph, it's forcing output to be positive. So let's take a look at another function. I'm going to call it g of x. Then I'm going to do x cubed minus 6x. And we're going to plot g of x minus 4 to 4. And here's g of x. And part of it is below the x-axis, part of it is above the x-axis. Well, if I take the absolute value of g of x, it's going to force all the output to be positive. So what it's going to do is it's going to leave it's going to leave the part that's above the x-axis. It leaves it alone. Doesn't do anything to it. 
but the part where it's below the x-axis, it's going to reflect it about the x-axis. So let's plot the absolute value of g of x. So that's going to be f, which is absolute value of g of x. So I put g of x inside of f. So I'm taking the absolute value of g of x. And then we see that it flipped everything. It flipped um, the things that were below the x-axis, flipped it about the x-axis. But the part that was above the x-axis, it left it alone. So this is what absolute value does to, to a function. Just make sure that the output is positive. Now, this is not a reflection about the x-axis. If you want to reflect about the x-axis, then you have to plot minus g of x. And so that's, um, let me go ahead and plot g of x and minus g of x at the same time. Minus g of x is the true reflection about the x-axis. Absolute value of x is the reflection about the x-axis only for the part that is below the x-axis. Well, let's suppose I wanted to solve an equation involving absolute value of x. Suppose I wanted to solve the equation, um, let me type this. Suppose I wanted to do absolute value of 3x minus 4 equals 5. And I wanted to solve this equation. This, uh, these types of equations sometimes give people a hard time, especially if I make the right-hand side more complicated, which I'll do in just a second. So let's suppose I wanted to solve this equation. Well, the left-hand side is, is the function the absolute value of 3x minus 4. So the left-hand side is f of 3x minus 4. Remember, in this, in this notebook, f is absolute value. And this is the absolute value of x in, uh, in the... Um, piecewise defined notation. If you wanted to see what it is in the regular notation, it would just be abs 3x minus 4, which is absolute value 3x minus 4. Okay, so the left-hand side is f of 3x minus 4, and the right-hand side is the function y equals 5. It's the horizontal line y equals 5. So I'm going to redefine g to be that horizontal line, which is just 5. G of x is a horizontal line, y equals 5. So now I'm going to plot both of these uh, at the same time. So I'm plotting the left-hand side along with the right-hand side. And we see that this horizontal line, y equals 5, that's the red line. The horizontal line intersects the graph in two places. Well, at each of these intersection points, I get a solution. The solution uh, to this equation, it's the value of x that, that is the x-coordinate of that intersection point. It's not a, the solution to an equation is a, is a number. It's not an ordered pair. Uh, these are one variable equations. It's a number. So the number I'm looking for is the x-coordinate of the point right here where these graphs intersect, and the x-coordinate right there where, where that graph intersects. So graphically, that's what uh, solving this equation means. Another way we can look at that is to subtract everything on one side. So instead of writing uh, the original equation, which was absolute value of 3x minus 4 equals 5, another way to write that same equation or equivalent equation would be to write, to so take that and go minus 5 on both sides equals 0. And so then what we're trying to do is find the x-intercepts or the x coordinate of the x-intercepts of this function, 3x minus 4. So watch what happens when I plot this. You see right here where, the, where it crosses the x-axis, that number is the same number as the x-coordinate up here. They, they match perfectly. If I graph them on the same interval, you, you would see better. So let me go ahead and graph the previous one from minus 5 to 5. And we see that they are indeed, the x-coordinates are the same for, the, for these relevant points. So what I'm doing, I'm just shifting it down 5 units. One way to solve an equation is to always put everything on one side and have equals 0. And then you're looking at x-intercepts. X when you do that, then you don't have to worry about the, the range. You don't have to worry about whether you're plotting it in a, in a, valid, in the, in a valid y range, whether you've seen that, that intersection point. So what I like to do when I'm using a computer or a calculator to solve something 
is to always put everything on one side and set it equal to zero. That's how you solve the, uh, an equation, is to make it uh, equal to zero. And then you're just finding the x-intercepts. Well, to find the, the x-intercepts, then we just use solve. So I'm solving 3x minus uh, 4 minus 5 equals equals 0. And I'm solving it for x. And it tells me the answer is minus 1 third or 3. And if the, if the output is complicated because it gives the exact answer, then you can always use n solve, and it gives you the decimal approximation. So the solutions to the equation are minus 1 third and 3. Now suppose I change the equation. Suppose I have the, the equation absolute value of 3x minus 5 equals minus 2x plus 1. So suppose I have that equation. Well, if I bring everything to one side, then I have absolute value. I have absolute value of 3x minus 5 plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And so now what I want to do is I want to find the x-intercepts of this function right here. I want to find the x-intercepts of that. Well, this equation is it's f of 3x minus 5, it's absolute value of 3x minus 5, plus 2x minus 1. And let's say I go from minus 10 to 10. And it doesn't look like it has any x-intercepts. So what this means is that this equation has no solution. There was no solution to this equation. We can, we can check that it has no solution by using the solve command. So I can go solve 3x minus 5, f of 3x minus 5. That's the absolute value of 3x minus 5 plus 2x minus 1 equals equals 0. And I'm solving for x. And you see I get an empty solution set. There is no solution to this equation. So it's a good idea. Um, there's three things I wanted to point out. One, actually, actually a lot of things, but three main things I wanted to point out. When you're solving the equation, if you have a computer or a calculator, it doesn't require any extra effort to graph it. So when you solve the equation, graph it and see if it graphically makes sense. Then use the computer to, to solve it and, and see if, if both pieces match up. Because sometimes there's errors in input. Sometimes you didn't write something incorrectly. So use the tools at your disposal to check your work. I'll just blindly do something. You have to check to see if it makes sense. Now, I want to point out, you don't have to put everything on one side when you solve this. You can go solve f of 3x minus 5 equals equals minus 2x plus 1. And you still get the, there's no solution set. The reason I, I did this is because if you plot this, so if I plot absolute value of 3x minus 5, and then minus 2x plus 1, let's say from minus 10 to 10. And we see graphically that they don't intersect at all, so there's no solution uh, to that equation. Now, the reason I like to put everything on one side is because these, gra these graphs might intersect for very large values of y. This, the, the x value might be somewhat large, and the y value might be huge. And so I might not graph it in the right window. So I like to put everything on one side because then it's always about something equaling zero and, and I don't have to worry about the y range. You're just looking at an x-intercept and the y and the y coordinate is always zero on an x-intercept. So I don't have to worry about whether the plot range is, is uh, large enough to capture the essence of what's going on. That's why I like to put everything equal to zero. The other reason I like to put everything equal to zero is because when we solve inequalities, you really do want everything uh, on one side of the inequality. Let's say I wanted to solve the inequality absolute value of minus 3x plus 6 is less than 12. Well, I'm going to plot what's going on right here. I'm going to plot the left-hand side. That's, that's uh, f of minus 3x plus 6. And then the right-hand side is 12. It's a function 12. It's a horizontal line. 
whoops, it's x goes from minus 20 to 20. And we see that there's uh, two inter there's two intersection points. Now we're solving an inequality. We're solving where the absolute value function is less than 12. So we want to find the values of x where the absolute value is below that horizontal line. So we want to see where it's below that horizontal line. Well, if I put everything on one side, instead of solving this inequality right here, if I put everything on one side, I subtract 12, so I get minus 12, less than 0. This is going to make things a little bit easier to, to understand. So I go f of minus 3x plus 6, and then minus 12. So now my inequality, it's, I don't have to worry about being under one function or above another function. My inequality just becomes where am I below the x-axis. If you put everything on one side when you solve an inequality, then, then the question always comes down to where are you below the x-axis, where are you above the x-axis? And since we're doing less than zero, I want to know where I'm below the x-axis. So I want to know the values of x where I'm below the x-axis. So that's going to be this interval right here. For all of these values of x between these two points, the, the function is below the x-axis. And so the, the answer is going to be an interval between this x-coordinate right here and the x-coordinate of that point right there. So I need to find those x-coordinates, which means I need to solve the equation equal to 0. So I go minus 3x plus 6, after the value of that, minus 12 equals equals 0, solving for x. And so the answer is minus 2 and positive 6. So the answer for the inequality, the solution to the inequality, is going to be between minus 2 and 6. It's going to be that interval of values. Now, there's absolutely nothing special about absolute value in this regard. This is how you solve every inequality. Put everything on one side, and then just use, look at the graph and see where you're above the x-axis and where you're below the x-axis. And the key point is where are you 0? Where are, what are the x-intercepts? Those are the key points. Between x-intercepts, the function is either always above the x-axis or below the x-axis, for the most part in this class. We're, we're, we'll look at some piecewise defined functions where this isn't necessarily true, but for the most part, that's true. For reasonably behaved functions, that's true. So you just look at the picture and say, where am I below the x-axis? Where am I above the x-axis? And the answer to the inequality is it's the interval, the open interval, minus 2 to 6. That's the solution. Remember, when you solve an inequality, it's the values of x that make this true. We don't care about the y values. It's the values of x. Same thing when you solve an equation. It's the values of x that make that statement true. The y value does not matter.